Uh, we've been doing some things with kinetic theory, and here's another th kinetic theory demonstration. Uh, one of the problems you have when you have a gas, people think, boy, there's a lot of stuff there. But in reality, a gas is mainly empty space. And in fact, at room temperature, a rough approximation is that one one thousandth of the space of the gas is actually the solid little particles which we believe are flying around. Now, this little box right here will show that a little bit. I have in it something we call pinning shot, which uh, my understanding well, is that it's used to clean airplanes. At least it was a decade ago when I got my supply. And they would take the planes and bring them into a big hangar. Then they would blast this. It's really a sandblasting type of thing with its very fine particles. And that would smooth out the side of the plane and the plane then would not take as much fuel as it traveled around, and it saved them money. So there's two ways you can agitate this. One is to simply take your hand and just move it around, and you should barely be able to see some particles moving around. That's one way. Now, I like sound, and in a classroom, like we have sound and so forth. So I have an electric engraver with a rubber stopper at the end. So I can put that on here and cause the molecules to fly around. Now I'm going to stop for a moment because I want to point out one thing. This shot is almost all identical size. It's very finely tuned to be about the same size. But when you agitate it, or when you agitate it with this, if you look at all the dots, are they moving at the same speed? And if we watch this, I would hope you saw that some of them are moving a little faster, some are moving a little slower, and in fact, at any temperature, this is really temperature. Temperature and kinetic energy are related to each other, and you can actually have a formula that relates temperature and kinetic energy. And so when I agitate this, I'm giving it a certain temperature. But not every molecule of that gas is moving at that speed. There's some that are a little faster, some that are a little slower. This also then applies to liquids. And in a liquid, some are moving a little faster, some are a little slower. So if water is evaporating, the molecules you're leave, that are leaving the water's surface are the ones that are moving a little faster. And they leave. And as they leave, the water gets cooler because they lost the highest speed molecules. Now, a second thing I'd like to point out about that is I've now upscaled this a little bit. And now these particles are too big relative to this volume of a gas. But I wanted to be able to show two sizes here. There's the small ones, and there's a little bit larger. The larger are larger, ma larger mass, the small ones are smaller mass. Now, if I agitate this, and we look at what happens, and you look at the speed of the small ones relative to the large ones, I would think that on the average, you should see that the small ones are moving on faster on the average, and the little ones are moving, or sorry, the small ones are moving faster, the larger ones are moving slower. Now, the wonderful thing about this is, it's possible to determine exactly how much faster on the average the large ones are moving than the small ones. Let's use the blackboard. And let's look at the kinetic energy of the small and the kinetic energy that was supplied to the large ones. The motion is temperature. But when I'm shaking the box, I am shaking both the small and the large the same amount, the same amount of motion. So they are getting the same kinetic energy. They're at the same temperature. So at the same temperature, the kinetic energy of an individual molecule would be equal for the small ones and the large ones. But in physics, we learn that kinetic energy is one-half 
mv squared. And so the small ones and the large ones, this relationship should hold for them. If we take out the halves and we want to find the relationship between the large ones, if we solve this algebraically, the volume of the large ones squared over the volume of the small ones squared is equal to the mass of the small ones divided by the mass of the large ones. And if we then take a square root, the volume of the large ones, or the velocity, excuse me, of the large ones divided by the velocity of the small ones is going to be equal to the square root of the mass of the small over the mass of the large. And you then get a formula to relate the speeds. So for example, if we have something like oxygen, oxygen uh, has a speed uh, or a weight of 32. And uh, methane has a weight of 16. The difference, or the division, is 2. So the speeds are related by the square root of 2, which means the lighter one will be moving the square root of 2, 1.414 times faster than the larger ones.